This tutorial is about curves on surfaces. In VisPro, you can create 2D curves in the XY plane and project these curves onto the parametric space of the surface so that the curve lays perfectly on the surface. The 2D curves can be simple segments, such as lines, circles, or ellipses, or a combination of multiple curves, which are created as wires. The surfaces can be any type of surface, such as a cylinder, sphere, or cone. In our first example, we'll create a spiral on a cone surface. Create a point node and a line node, and connect the point output as the second coordinate of the line. The first point of the line should remain at 0, 0, 0. Add a slider node and connect it to the point's x coordinate. Set the slider domain from 0 to 100. Set the y coordinate to 1 and keep z at 0. This places the line on the xy plane and gives it a small slope, which means that when projected onto the uv space of the cone, the projection will go upward. For the cone, choose Primitive Conical Surface. The Curve on Surface node does the projection, and this node is found in the Curve category. Connect the line output as the curve to project, and connect the cone as the surface. Now move the slider to see the line wrapping around the cone, forming the spiral. A Line Sync node will export the spiral into SketchUp. In the second example, we'll wrap a solid coil around a cylinder. Start with an ellipse and choose Transform Rotate to add a rotate node. Connect the ellipse output as the geometry to rotate. Add a slider whose range is 0 to 20 and connect it to the x radius of the ellipse. The y radius should be 0.05. Add another slider from 1 to 15 and connect it to the rotation angle. Now we can adjust both the length of the ellipse and its rotation angle. Now we need two cylinders, one with a radius of 1 and the other slightly larger with a radius of 1.1. Each cylinder gets a curve on surface node with the cylinder output connected to the surface. and the rotate output gets connected to each curve on surface. This means that one ellipse is projected onto both cylinders, producing two sets of projected curves. To create a solid from the two projected curves, add a loft shape. Connect both curves on surface as the loft curves. Turn off the preview of both cylinders. Move both sliders to see how the coil shape changes. Increasing the rotation angle increases the thread length. Lengthening the ellipse lengthens the coil. Turn off the previews of the ellipse and the rotate nodes as well. Add a shell sink to see the solid coil in SketchUp. In our last example, we'll create this solid found in the sample model called Grid. The shape is created by projecting rectangles onto a cylinder. Start with a rectangular grid node found in the grid category. The output of this node is a list, a series of coordinates of all points on this grid. The grid itself is comprised of a series of wires. To make holes in this grid, we need to offset the grid lines. From the BREP category, choose Offset Wires. Set the offset distance as negative 0.03. Connect the grid output to the wires to offset, and we can see the holes formed. Next, we need a cylindrical surface node and a curve on surface node. Connect the cylinder as the projection surface, and connect the offset output as the curves to project. The grid will be used for the holes, and we also need the face to cut the holes from. Add a rectangle node. Match the width and height from the rectangular grid so that the rectangle will be the same size as the grid. The rectangle needs a projected curve as well. So add another curve from surface node where the rectangle output is the curve and the cylinder is the surface. Now add three sliders, 
two for the rectangular grid dimensions, and one for the cylinder radius. We'll set the domain for the rectangle input as 0 to 4, and the radius slider can go from 0 to 2. For the projected rectangular face, we need to make a face from these curves. Choose BREP face from wire and connect this curve output as the wire. The projected grid will become holes in the face we just made. This will require a face holes node, but before we can connect these curves to face holes, we need to change the output list. This output list of rectangles is two dimensional, but the face holes node requires a one dimensional list. We'll explain multi-dimensional lists in an upcoming tutorial. So choose multi-list, flatten multi-list, and connect this output list to it. Now we're ready to cut the face holes. Choose BREP face holes. The face input comes from the face from wire node, and the hole input comes from the flatten multi-list node. Finally, choose shape, thicken shape, to make this grid face 3D. Use the face holes output as the shape to thicken. Turn off the preview of the face from wire to better see the holes. Now we can see what happens when we adjust the sliders.